Hello, Mom. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Tony. Happy birthday to you. Thanks, Mom. God bless you, my dear. Amen. I heard Prof's voice. Is there with you? Right. Speak with him. Hello, Tony. Good morning, Dad. Good morning. We called just to wish you a happy birthday. Long life and prosperity in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. Hold on for your mom. Hello, dear. Hello, Mom. I'm glad you remember my birthday. You can always trust me. Um, we have something special for your special day. Can you come over this evening? Wow. Sure, Mom. I will. But that will be later in the evening. You know, my job. That's okay, Tony. Do have a nice day at work. Thanks, Mom. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Will it be? What? Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, Dad, it's going to be soon. That's what you've been saying for the past five years. How soon is soon? Very soon. Son, God has highly favored you. You have a flourishing career as a petrochemical engineer. God has blessed you with your own personal house. You own a posh car. And to crown it all, you're a good Christian. But at 40, you are still single. Don't you think something is missing? Mom, I have been waiting for God's will for my life. And I've always told you this. Does it take eternity to know God's will? My dear, leave the young man alone. I'm sure he will get married soon. That word again, son. I'm getting really confused now. I think I need to consult a dictionary to know what that word son actually means. <laughs> no, mom. You don't need a dictionary. I will tell you the meaning of the word soon. If you can afford to pay for my service. So I'm not joking. joking. This is a serious matter. Well, I really didn't want to do this now. But since the word soon sounds like eternity to my dear mom, I think I have to let the cat out of the bag. I am already engaged. into the compound. Rachel! Yes, ma. Tony is here. Go open the door for him. Yes, ma. Hmm. I'm sure you must have been watching the gate all day. You can trust me. <laughs> <laughs> At last.
say you just started off a master degree program in international relations, which you did in the U.S. Yes, ma'am. That's beautiful. So, what are your plans now? Um, I actually took a study leave to run the course, ma'am. By God's grace, I'm back to my job here in Nigeria. That's good. I wish you well in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> we met before? I don't think so, ma. Your face looks very familiar. Do you know anyone that bears the name Bola? That's my middle name, ma. I'm Bola Tito, Vivian Bola Tito Hmm. Now I remember. Hey, ladies. I can see you're having a good time. Sure. Vivian is such a pleasant girl. Thanks, Mom. That's I'm glad fine. you like her. Doctor. His vital signs are stable and encouraging. He will soon come round. What exactly is wrong with my son? Um, we can't say for sure now. We're running some tests on him. <sighs> but madam, let you two walk up. Hmm? Don't get yourself walked up. He will be okay. Hmm? Thank you, doctor. All right. <laughs> oh, no, no, not yet. Um, some nurses are with him taking some samples um, until they are through. Hmm? Tony cannot marry that girl. Why not? I told you we have met before. She was a patient at the teaching hospital. What has that got to do with it? To be sure, I told the record officer to search out her file. He eventually located a file with the name Bolatito Ajitomowo. She's the same as Vivian. My dear, what are you driving at? As a medical practitioner, I know I shouldn't do what I'm about to do now. Because I swore to the Hippocratic Oath. Part of which forbids me from divulging the secrets of my patients. But I'm afraid I have to break the oath. Because there's fire on the mountain. I mean there's fire on my mountain. Woman, what is it? That girl came to the gynecology department of the hospital six years ago. I attended to her. You said you've had five abortions so far. And you had the most recent one about three weeks ago, right? Yes, ma. Where was that? A friend took me to a man in a neighboring town. A medical doctor? I'm not sure, ma, but they call him doctor. He actually owns a small pharmaceutical shop. How did it go? The whole process lasted about 20 minutes. After the abortion, I was in pains for about five days. So I went back to the man to complain. He gave me some drugs which did not help at all. He later told me that my uterus had ruptured and that he would fix it. He carried out a surgery on me. Did he tell you the kind of surgery he was going to carry out on you? No, ma. But I have been relieved since the surgery was carried out two weeks ago. 
Not until last night when I began to have these severe pains. I couldn't sleep throughout the night. This is why I decided to come to the teaching hospital. I'm sorry. This scan result shows the man carried out an hysterectomy on you. Hysterectomy? He removed your uterus. And unfortunately, in the process, some parts of her reproductive system were damaged. Infections and slight decomposition setting in some parts. And this is the cause of the severe pain you are now experiencing. The man must be a quack. Ma, you mean I don't have a womb? No, you don't. I won't be able to bear children. My dear young lady, your concern for now should be about your life. You must go in for proper medical care immediately. You see, after ruining her own life through waywardness, she now wants you to join in suffering for her, 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 her recklessness. No, Mom. This is a clear case of mistaken identity. It cannot be Vivian. Why don't you ask her? I don't need to do that. I know Vivian. I trust her. I can vouch for her. She's a decent and well brought up child of God. She's a worker in her church. An intercessor. I am sure there is a case of mistaken identity here. Mom, why don't you simply tell me you don't like her? It's all better than you resorting to this cheap blackmail. My dear son. Tony, you speak with Vivian. Ask her, if for nothing, at least to prove your mom wrong. Hmm? Vivian, why did you hide this from me? Why? I never planned to hide it from you. The last time you came to visit me in the US, I told you I had a confession to make. I was going to tell you everything about my life, but you didn't allow me. You said we should not waste our time dwelling on the past. That we should rather look into the future. That's true. But I never knew it was a serious issue like this. You should have insisted. You should have looked for another means. Another time to tell me. I tried to. But I lost the boldness I had that first time. I later decided to hand everything over to God and believe Him for a miracle. A miracle? Ha! Daddy asked me to give this to you. Thank you, Ma. Ha! Huh. Thank you very much, Ma. We thank God. We huh. thank God. Please get up. Huh. Please help me to thank Daddy. I will. Sorry, he's busy upstairs. I pray God will take care of your children too. Amen. Please hurry to the bank and cash the money for your child's surgery. Yes, Ma. Thank you, Ma. You're welcome. Goodbye, Ma. It is well. Thank you so much, God Ma. is in control. Vivian! You 
told him it was true. Ha! Ah, you should have denied it. I couldn't have done that. I was not going to hide the secret from him in the first place. He was the one who refused to grant me audience when I was going to confess to him. Come to think of it, I couldn't have denied having met his mother at the teaching hospital. The evidences are too glaring. Ha! I trust myself. If I was in your shoes, I would have denied neatly and that old witch would have gone on her knees to apologize to me. Look, Debbie, my Christian faith does not permit me to lie. Honestly, I don't regret confessing my misdeeds. I have peace in my heart before God. The worst that could happen is for Tony to back out. But that would be very painful. God knows I really love him. You love him, but now you have lost him. I mean, you should have kept the whole thing a secret until after your marriage. By then, it would have been trapped by the marriage vows of for better, for worse. This would have made it impossible for him to push you out. Ah, I'm sorry, Vivian. You are the greatest fool on earth. I agree with you. If I was not a fool, I wouldn't have taken you as my best friend. If I was not a great fool, I wouldn't have followed your footsteps of living a wayward lifestyle. You taught me how to mess around with men. You taught me how to get rid of unwanted pregnancies. Now, what are you getting at? You took me to that quack who removed my womb and finally destroyed my destiny. You're right to call me a fool. After all, now you're married with children. While I have no hope of getting married, even if I manage to get married, I have no hope of bearing children in life. I'm indeed the greatest fool on earth. Um, I have to take my leave now. What do you want to do? I want to fetch water. With that? Mm -hmm. A basket? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is impossible. <laughs> you wait and see. It was impossible. I knew it is possible. For with God, all things are possible. Can you help me, sir? Oh, with all pleasure. Dream. If I 
Bible says a dream comes through the multitude of business. You simply saw in your dream what you were thinking about all day. It was an ordinary dream. No, Mom. I'm sure God gave me that revelation to reassure me that all will be well. All will be well? When a scanning machine did not see a woman, huh? All will be well? Agreed. Agreed. Your scanning machine did not see a woman, Vivian. But by faith, I see one. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. I have faith that Vivian will carry my baby and um, babies. Look, what faith are you talking about? What do you know about faith? Mom, you're my first teacher in the school of faith. As a kid, you taught me how to believe God for everything. Healing, protection, provision. You taught me that with God, all things are possible. And I believed your teachings. And since then, faith has been working for me. Look, Tony, this is a different ballgame altogether. We are not talking of pelvic inflammatory disease here. We are not talking of blocked fallopian tubes. We are not talking of cervical incompetence. We are talking of a woman without a womb at all, Tony! <laughs> Your mom told me everything. I told her not to raise the issue with me again. That she should give you time to think over it. So that you can weigh your options carefully and make up your mind. I believe you have done so. Yes, sir. Oh, good. So what's your decision? Thank you, sir. I have decided to let go. Thank you, Jesus. But you never told me. So, you've decided to let go of the lady? No, sir. I have decided to let go of every fear. I have decided to go ahead with the marriage. I am marrying Vivian. Uh, um, Tony, hmm. have you read in the Bible that wisdom is profitable to direct? Yes, sir. Don't you think wisdom demands that you do the right thing? Very well, sir. That is why I have decided to go ahead with the marriage, sir. To a lady without a womb? Yes, sir. I am only acting on what you have been teaching us in church. I remember you spent a whole month earlier this year in church to teach a powerful series on the theme, The Just Shall Live by Faith. Sir, the things you taught us are true and applicable in all situations, aren't they? Um, they are, they are, um, you see, this is my counsel to everyone, please allow God to take control. Pastor, is that all you are going to say? Please, let us pray. Please, sir, I thought you were going to cancel him. So, sure, I've already canceled him. Tony, please, allow God to take control. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. I want to commit your children to your hands. <laughs> yeah. What is funny? The way our pastor escaped from the trap you set for him, he didn't want to get into trouble with you and your son. I like that man. Very wise. <laughs> According to you, all he said was, Please allow God to take control. That is what we call spiritual diplomacy. <laughs> Dear, this is not funny. You seem not to care about this issue. Of course I do. The truth is that I have cast all my care upon Jesus, for he cares for me. My dear, why don't you allow God to take control as advised by the pastor? Let God's will be done.
What should he do? Tell him to run. But he's really in love with that lady. <laughs> Being in love with a lady without a womb? For God's sake, that lady is not a woman. She's a man in the skin of a woman. Tell the man to run. I know you to be a Christian. Now as a Christian, don't you think they can believe God for a miracle? Mm, of course they can. They can. But you see, to get that kind of a miracle, they need the faith of Father Abraham, hmm. coupled with the anointing of Apostle Paul. In addition to this, they need the ruggedness of Prophet Elijah, hmm. plus a high dose of patience like Job. Tony, if you like that man, tell him to run as fast as his legs could carry him. But wait. Tony, I hope you're not the man we are talking about here. You are never serious. If you are, run, Tony, run. Hey, break time is almost over. We must eat fast and get back to work. That's true. I have made up my mind about our relationship. I am here to let you know what my decision is. Please, can I get a glass of water? <laughs> Who would believe this is the boy that just had a surgery? That's good for you. <laughs> this is for Bolu. Ha. Thank you, ma. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Bolu. Yes, ma. Grandpa and grandma brought this for you. Come and say thank you to them. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. God, God bless you. you. <laughs> what a sharp boy. Uh -huh. A wonderful boy. Well, um, let's uh, pray before we take our leave. <laughs> our Father and our God, we appreciate you for helping us. Vivian. Yes? I have made up my mind. I am marrying you. Please, don't consider this a favor. I am only acting according to my conviction. I have no doubt whatsoever. You are the will of God for my life. I know the God whom we serve. He is able to give us children. And I know He will give us children. But if he chooses not to, my love for you will never go down. Never. Is it? I finally walk into this trap, my eyes wide open. What trap? <sighs> my only child. Tony is now permanently hooked to a woman without a womb. That means I don't have a hope for a grandchild in life. No. 
Don't start this again. We have since crossed this bridge. You were in high spirits throughout the engagement ceremony yesterday. You were beaming with smiles throughout the wedding and reception ceremonies today. Why are you doing this now? I only put up a happy face so as not to send the wrong signal to our guests. The truth is I'm not happy at all. I'm not. My dear, let us join the young fellows in trusting God for the best. <sighs> you are the reason why we are singing Jehovah. You are the most high God. You are the reason why we are singing Jehovah. You are the most high God. You are the most high. You are the most high God. You are the most high. You are the most high God. You are the most high. You are the most high God. You are the most high. You are the most high God. You are the most high. Ma, you told me the last surgery was in Sussex. Sure, it was. Why is my son down again? It has nothing to do with the surgery. All your son needs now, as I explained earlier to you, is a blood transfusion, and he will be okay. Now please sit down and calm down. Madam, your son's blood group is O, so he is a universal donor. However, his resource factor is negative, so he is O negative. And that means he can only receive blood from O negative blood group. This group is scars. We ran a test on you and you are O positive. But we're also sure that your son must have received his resource factor from the father. So, is he in town? I don't have a husband. I lost him in a car crash some years ago. Oh, I'm so sorry. Why did you ask? Um, considering the fact that he needs the blood transfusion very urgently, his father will have been the best person to donate. But now that you said the father is dead... Uh... No, doctor. The father is alive. Uh, actually, I didn't have any child for my late husband. I got pregnant for another man after his death. All right. Is a man in town? Oh, good. Can you invite him over? You have to let the cat out of the bag. He's not the first man to have a child out of wedlock. He will not be the last either. You can't keep the secret any longer. His own. The news will break his own. Your son. Your son is about to die. The hospital needs blood to save his life. You have a ready-made donor in the boy's father. You are here talking about the man's home. Come to think of it. You didn't force yourself on him, did you? No. I only went to him for help after my husband's death. He's been helping me with money since then. One thing led to the other and... And you got pregnant for him. You have a child for him. So? Lizzie Bumi. You can't keep this a secret forever. The earlier you revealed it, the better. For Bonu's sake. to mommy. Yes, sir. Are you through? All those, ma. Please be fast. Yes, ma. Because you have some shoppings to do. Yes. 
is a text message from Bumi. Good day, sir. Your son just took ill again. The sickness is more serious than I thought. Your attention is urgently needed in the hospital. Please come over. What kind of test message is this? I think it's about her sick son. I know. But I, I don't like the tone of it. Especially the phrase, your son. I mean, listen. Your son just took ill again. When did her son suddenly become your son? Oh, that. Uh, I think it's a cultural thing. You know, in our culture, every child is everybody's child. And every parent is everybody's parent. I mean, wait. But what does she mean by your attention is urgently needed in the hospital? Please come over. What makes her think she can order you around? We're not under any compulsion to render financial assistance to her. We simply see it as a spiritual obligation. I mean, a service unto God. You are absolutely correct. I think she is beginning to overstep her bounds. Let me call her and correct her. No, dear. No need for that. Let's ignore her. When she comes to her senses, she will find a better way to present her case. That's the problem with her people. When you show them little acts of kindness, they end up mistaking your generosity for stupidity. Can you imagine that? Why did you send this kind of text to me? I didn't want to call because I couldn't tell who might be around you during the phone call. Why did you frame the text this way? How? You said your son. You referred to Bolu as my son. Is Bolu not your son? My wife saw the text. She read it to me. <sighs> I didn't know she would ever say the text. I thought you would read and delete as usual. She saw the text before me. She took a very strong exception to the tone of the message. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Listen, Bumi. I didn't plan for things to turn out this way between us. Sir, you don't have to go over this again. I agreed. A mistake was made. I've done my best to keep the whole thing a secret as you requested. I had to send that test because I was pushed to the wall. I thought you invited me over to discuss how to save Bolu's life. Our son's life is at stake. Look, leave this our son, our son stuff out of it. Simply refer to him as Bolu. <sighs> uh -huh. What did you say is wrong with him? What does the doctor need from me? Blood. Bolu needs an urgent blood transfusion, and it's only you that can donate. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. I just entered the doctor's office. Our office is on the first floor. Consulting room five. Consulting room 5. I'll be out waiting for you on the corridor. No, I mean... Okay, sir. That was the man. The boy's father? Yes, doctor. I have to wait for him on the corridor. He told me not to worry that he'll find his way here. He should be here in a moment. That's all right. Please sit down. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> Mom, that won't be necessary. What do you mean? Is it a sin to adopt a baby? No, Mom. It is perfectly in order. As a matter of fact, one does not have to be childless to consider adopting a child. It is a wonderful way to extend love to a child in need. But for us, adoption is not on our table. Then how do you hope to have a baby when Vivian is not? Mom, God will do it. Come in, please. Good morning, sir. Dr. 
Dr. Mrs. Fenwa. <laughs> Good morning. I never knew you work here. Really? I'm not surprised. You know, we only meet in church, fellowship together, exchange pleasantries, and we all go our different ways to meet again at another service time. But I'm, I think your wife knows I work here. How is she? Uh, and she's fine. She's fine. <sighs> um, Prof, please sit down. Thank you, ma'am. I hope all is well. Um... Or is he... Um, madam, can you please kindly excuse us for a moment? I'd like to be alone with the prof. into my office about six years ago. She had just lost her husband in a car crash. She needed help to pay her house rent. I knew the right thing to do. I referred her to my wife. We were moved by compassion to help her. Since then, we have been offering her different forms of assistances to help her switch the pains of the loss of her husband. She later became so close to Ross, to me in particular, because on several occasions she visited me in my office without my wife knowing about it. I later got careless. I lost my guard. I, I slept with her and ended up with a child out of wedlock. Hmm. I'm sorry, sir. Is your wife aware of this? No. I have managed to keep this a secret since then. Now that you know about it, I'm not sure... Oh, no, no, Prof, no. Oh, I'm not that kind of a person. And the ethics of my profession will not allow me to reveal such secrets. But sir, you are a Christian, an elder in the church. More so for the sake of eternity. Don't you think it's best that you reveal the secret to your wife? <laughs> Hello, Prof. I have completed your job. She is gone. Come with my balance as agreed. <sighs> no. No. I can't do that. I can't kill. <sighs> Why am I thinking this way? Hello, dear. Hello, dear. Where are you? On my way home. You went to City Care Hospital? C City Care? Um, yes. How, how did you know? Someone called. She said she saw your car in the parking lot of the hospital. I hope everything is okay. Um, yes. Um, really. I went there to see one of my students. Um, 
who got involved in uh, an accident in the laboratory this morning. Uh, he's fine now. Thank God. Uh, I'll be on my way. I'm, I'm, I'll be home shortly. Okay, dear. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Hey, I lied. I just told a lie. What is happening to me? Oh, how will I get out of this mess? Hello, dear. But I just... You just buried it. How, how did you find it? I think the question should be, why did you keep it? Why did you keep this a secret? There is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. There is nothing hidden that shall not be known. Dear, why did you try to bury the secret? Why? is ready. Eventually fall asleep. It has now become your usual practice to fall asleep while watching the TV. Old age. <laughs> you are not serious. <laughs> Dear. myself for some days now. You forget things quickly. You mislead things easily. I know you very well. Definitely, there's something bothering your mind. What is it, dear? What is it?
Honey, what are these? My surprise package for your birthday, dear. Wow! <laughs> Thank you. Baby things. Huh? But why this? You know, I forget that. We walk by faith and not by sight. More so, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Our weeks of fervent prayers, fast things. Coupled with intense study and confession of God's word, will not go in vain. Her babies will come. They will come. Which woman? You, you mean that widow? Dear. Why? Why? I'm sorry. Why? I'm sorry. You, you mean Bobby is your son? Bobby is your son. here all alone. You're supposed to be in bed by now. I came to beg God to forgive me. Besides, I can't bring myself to sleep with you on the same bed. I have betrayed you. I've disappointed you. I've broken your heart. And I know, I know you can never forgive me for this. It is true you broke my heart. But the Bible admonished us not to allow the sun to go down on our anger. I can't possibly go to bed without forgiving you. Dear, go seize my heart. I've forgiven you. To prove this, I put a call across to Bumi this afternoon. I told her to come over with her son. I mean, our son, first thing tomorrow morning. I didn't give her any detail. We need to iron out a few things. My God's grace. Please don't hold this against you. I promise. This cannot be true. Mom. It is very true. Vivian is pregnant. But it's medically impossible for a woman without a womb to be pregnant. But it is godically possible. <laughs> Permit my English. <laughs> See, apart from the pregnancy test that was carried out in the hospital laboratory, we repeated the test in three other laboratories. They all confirm it. Those are the results in your hands. Hmm. 
we're going to become grandparents. Thank you, Jesus. We also did a scan. That's the result. My God! The scan confirms it. Hmm. Vivian is 10 weeks pregnant. <laughs> Science can never explain this. Of course. Science can never explain God because his ways are past finding out. <laughs> oh, that's so thoughtful of you, dear. That is wonderful. Wow, this is beautiful. Thank you. I love it there. Nice. You added a time. Yeah? So, so thoughtful of you. How did you think of getting a suit for me this time? <laughs> I'm grateful. Thank you, dear. Yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. How do I look? Great. How did you know my size? What a question. <laughs> if I don't know your size, who else will? Oh, thanks, dear. I should be on my way. All right, then. Have a great day. Thanks. I will tell the whole world. My wife bought this for me <laughs> and added this to it. <laughs> Bye, dear. Yeah. Why did you do that? What? You gave your husband a stolen coat to wear. You also gave him a stolen tie to put on it. Hey, he doesn't know they were stolen. Oh, but you know it. You know you stole them. God also knows it. Call him back now and tell him those items were stolen. Otherwise, you will pay dearly for the deceit. You also stand the risk of missing heaven. Call him back now and tell him those items were stolen. Otherwise, you will pay dearly for the deceit. You also stand the risk of missing heaven. You're welcome, Pastor. Thank you, Prof. Your call came as a surprise. She woke up this morning looking very sick. I asked her what the matter was. All she could utter was, hmm, hmm. She later began to behave funny. I had to rush her here. What did the doctor say? They said her blood pressure is very high. They, they gave her some injections to calm her down. Was she showing signs of any illness before now? No. She's been very lively. Especially since she had the news of Tony's wife's conception. It is well. It is well, my brother. Let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I want to commit your daughter to your hands, Lord. I pronounce healing upon her now in Jesus' name. Amen. So what happened to her? I don't have the details. 
But from the little daddy told me on the phone, I guessed it's a spiritual attack. Ha! I came to pick you. We have to check on her in the hospital. Lord have mercy. Oh, thank God. You look much better today than you've looked in the last two days. What about Prof? You went home to bath and to freshen up. We'll be back before noon. I intentionally ask you to come before he returns. Pastor, I'm in serious trouble. What is it? I have a confession to make. Confession? Uh, please, go ahead. <laughs> a little over 40 years ago, Prof returned from his sabbatical leave abroad. He returned very sick. So he couldn't touch me for about two weeks after his return. During the period of his illness, I discovered that I was pregnant. And I knew instantly that Prof was not responsible for the pregnancy. Since he has not slept with me for some months before then. To cover up, I made sure Rob slept with me as soon as his health improved a bit. After nine months, I put to bed some weeks earlier than Prof expected. I told him it was not unusual to give birth earlier or later than the expected day of delivery. Please, Pastor, what is going on here? Do you understand what she's saying? Um, uh, really, she had told me everything. Madam, please go ahead. <laughs> so, is she trying to say that T Tony is not my son? I'm afraid, yes. <laughs> then, whose son is he? She said, while you were away on that sabbatical leave, a certain military officer disturbed her for her relationship. She rebuffed his advances. Unfortunately, she eventually got careless and fell for him. He slept with her twice a few weeks before you returned. <laughs> the man is the real father of Tony. Ha! According to her, the man died during a peacekeeping mission in Darfur over 20 years ago. <laughs> I'm sorry, dear. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> Take it in the I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Pastor, please. Don't beg me to forgive this woman. Yes, yes. Because I can't forgive her. Yes, yes. She's a murderer. Prof, please. I'm yes. sorry. Prof. Prof. Sorry. Who is it? The hotel manager, sir. What do you want? I'm sorry, sir. My workers reported to me that since we checked to this room over a week ago, you came out only twice just to pay for additional night and to buy a few snacks and drinks. I came to check if everything is all right, sir. I'm OK. Is there anything you need, sir? I don't need anything. And don't forget, I'm not expecting any visitor. That is, I don't want to see anybody. Okay, sir. Have a good day, sir. You're welcome. Yes. Please sit down. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Ah, oh, Bolu. How are you? I'm fine, ma. Thank you. Good boy. Come, come, come. Uh, mommy, 
I came to introduce my husband to you, Akike Tosin Olabode. You mean you have remarried? Yes, ma. We got married in the registry last week. You never told us. I'm sorry, ma. I wanted to, but I didn't have the boldness to come here because of... Uh... And because of what happened the other time. But it's that in the past. Thank you, ma. Um, I told him everything about my life, especially as it relates to Bolu. Uh, he said he would like to come here and thank you and daddy. Sorry, daddy is not around. <sighs> well, um, <clears throat> I appreciate your care, ma. And I really thank you for forgiving my wife. She told me how she betrayed your family. Oh, thanks be to God. This is not right. What? Refusing to forgive your wife and keeping away from your family. I have been telling you this for the past few days. I can't stay in the same house with that woman. I hate the very look of her face. She betrayed me. The same way you betrayed her when you had a child out of wedlock. You kept it a secret. She also kept ours a secret. All along, the secrets of the two of you were open before God. God, in his mercy, with elders' judgment to allow the two of you to make amends. Your wife forgave you. Do the same. Forgive her. Ha! Ah, I'd rather die than forgive her. If you die in the present condition, you will march straight to hell. No. My heart is right with God. Far from it. Your heart is currently full of malice, bitterness, and unforgiveness. Haven't you read Matthew chapter 6 from verse 14 to 15 in your Bible? It says, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive your trespasses. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. You must forgive your wife. If you don't, God will also not forgive your bitterness and stubbornness. Prove you are a Christian indeed. Forgive her. <laughs> Holy Spirit. This is difficult. Um, we are finally leaving for Abuja tomorrow. Oh, really? Yes, ma. He works and lives there. I have to move in with him. Ah, that's all right. But how about Bolu? I'm sure you're not taking him with you. Um, Please don't. I've already accepted him as mine. This is his home. He's staying here with us. Mommy, please. In my little time with both of them, I can see Bolu means so much to my wife. And uh, besides, I have found Bolu to be a pleasant little boy. Let him come with us, please. <sighs> I can't decide on this. Only Prof can. No, sir. His number is still unavailable. I just returned from the police station. I want to make a formal report. Yes, sir. They asked. I told them he walked away about a week ago and we've not been able to locate or reach him since then. They told me I was reporting too late. But I told them we have been praying and we, are, we were hoping he will come back home. Okay, sir. Amen, sir. Thank you, Pastor.
I'm sorry I walked away from you. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Oh, I'm sorry. From the depth of my heart, I forgive you. Oh, I'm sorry. Jesus Christ! The miracle has arrived. She put to bed the same day you were walking The away. same day I walked away? Yes. I never knew the devil was using unforgiveness to make me walk away from my miracle. Thank God I'm back now. Thank God. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. I guess your mom has told you everything. Good. Did you tell him about Bolu's paternity? He asked. And I felt there was no need hiding anything again. That's perfectly all right. Nothing has changed. Tony, you remain my son. We remain one big happy family. I thank God for these miracles. The miracle of forgiveness. The miracle of reunion. And the miracle of a grandchild. What is this or her name? He's a boy. The christening mm. should have been done yesterday. But they decided to wait for your return no matter how long it takes. Oh, ha. Huh. Tony. Thank you. Thank you, Vivian. In all this, I have learned some lessons. One, we all have our ugly pasts. Two, whatever we consider a closely kept secret is wide open before God. For this reason, it is foolishness for anyone to try to hide anything from God. Three, if we don't forgive others, God will not forgive us. And four, with God, all things are possible. <laughs>